Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, we're going to do some more visuals in Max for Live using this little video synthesizer that I've made that I'm going to be posting exclusively on my Patreon. So if you're a subscriber on there, you can have this and mess around with it. Or if you'd like to, you know, get hold of it, you could uh, support me on Patreon and download this plus a whole load of other things or just follow along the video as I talk you through how this works. So this is a simple little MIDI controlled uh, kind of visualizer thing. So I'm just pressing notes on my push right now. You could do it from your MIDI keyboard or whatever. Um, and what it's using is the new jit.gl.bfg object that came out in Max 8, I think, uh, which does like basic fun function graph stuff, but in uh, as textures as an OpenGL uh, thing rather than Jitter. So this is all running on the GPU. Uh, my GPU card is not very good. Um, this is a nearly 10 year old iMac. There's nothing I can do about it. So PC users, you know, just judge me all you want. I know the situation, okay? So basically what we have is we have these different types of noise. Um, and what happens is that when I press a MIDI note, a kind of little envelope raises and lowers the gain of the noise. So if I've got like a time dial here, which sort of will fade the noise in and out when I press a MIDI note. So we could go for, let's see what 500 milliseconds does. Oh, that's, that's just too long. Let's try something shorter. Some of these controls haven't been fully optimized, you know. But, um, yeah, so we've got these different um, noise functions and then they get fed in to a kind of feedback network, which kind of allows you to sort of screw around with the noise whilst it's being fed back. We can kind of move it around like this and do all this kind of weird sort of splodgy, smurgy sort of pixel shifting kind of, it's very like lo-fi, quite retro looking, but, and we can like twist it around and stuff and do all these kind of weird shapes and it's all done by MIDI. So I can go here and I can draw in a MIDI clip. Uh, let's just, let's go ultra widescreen. <laughs> uh, I can draw in like a simple like MIDI clip here of some notes, fire that off and it will just kind of ping little bits of noise. Um, then we've kind of got these filters here which kind of filter out the noise one filters the noise before it goes into the feedback network um, so as i increase that we'll just get little um sort of specks of noise come in if i go for like a smaller scale we might get some bigger squares there we go and I've, as i decrease that it kind of lets more of the noise through and that's based around certain numbers being above a certain value being allowed to pass through um, so if we have that quite high, then we just get very sparse amounts of noise. Then there's a, some scale controls here, which just kind of make it more detailed. I generally quite like to have them quite low, around about five. Then there's a speed, which is kind of for the evolution of the noise, the time of the noise. So if we have it like at zero, it'll just flash the same noise over and over. If we increase that time a little bit, then it kind of evolves. Um, Okay, then we've got the feedback filter, which does the same thing as the amount. It filters the noise, but does it in the feedback loop. So currently that's not filtered. But as we increase the filter, kind of only lets parts of the noise go through the feedback loop, which I only added uh, last night as an experiment. And it's really changed the whole feel of the whole, whole thing. Uh, so down here, we've got the fade and the luma controls. And this basically controls um, the way that we view the feedback. We kind of have a dry, wet control of the feedback. I put the fade to like about halfway and play around with the luma. Then that's kind of like a dry, wet control. So with the fade all the way down and the luma all the way up, we kind of just see the raw noise with the fade all the way down, we're kind of sending it into the feedback. Um, we've got this bound control, which is a sort of mirroring type thing. 
So when it's set to one, there's no mirroring and you can kind of see this when you zoom. And then as I try a different bound, we'll start to get these mirroring effects like this. So we can make kind of kaleidoscopic type shapes. You can move them around. All of these controls are nicely banked for your push or your MIDI controller or whatever. Yeah, and then we've got like X and Y to sort of move them left and right, up and down. I go back to the first bound mode. And then we've got the zoom, which kind of just zooms the feedback forwards and backwards. And then the theta, which kind of just lets us twist it. And then we've got this sharp control and that actually sharpens the image as it goes through the feedback network, which brings out all this kind of grungy detail which I quite like a lot. And we can also colorize the noise. Um, I'm not 100% sure what these numbers do yet. <laughs> I kind of want to think that they're red, blue, green, but they're not. <laughs> so they're kind of random. It's just like click and drag and find some, you know, yucky colors that you like and just kind of jam with it. So yeah, we can get these kind of interesting sort of smudge. I mean, it kind of looks a bit like vomit, actually. But cool vomit, you know. Everyone, like, needs to vomit now and again. It's better out than in. So, yeah, we can make these kind of, like, just very kind of yucky. Some of them look a little bit like shorts I used to wear in 1990. And then we've got the different types of noise. Some of them don't work because they need certain types of arguments. I tend to just stick with Perlin, Simplex and Cell. Cell's my favorite. I quite like the squares. So that's kind of no filtering in the feedback network. But as I increase that, it sort of just tends to let more of the lines through rather than the colors. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I like it. You make these weird kind of just, I don't know, pretty lo-fi. Also, it starts to get interesting when you start to play around with parameter automation in a clip. So I can sort of put a little thing here, maybe whack this one up a tiny bit, and then we can kind of automate the noise, uh, the zooming, I should say, from a MIDI clip. I know a lot of people say that, oh, it's all about audio reactive visuals and yeah, it can look good, but in some contexts it doesn't, it's a bit overwhelming. So I've been trying to look at ways to just use MIDI because, you know, I personally think that for some things it's more important that it's maybe locked to the timing of your music rather than being a sonification or rather a, a, a visual representation of what's happening sonically. Sometimes you just want things to be on the beat. So maybe MIDI controlled stuff is the way to go. Um, yeah, why don't we have a look inside? Oh, I want to delete that automation. Um, let's open it up, see what's inside. Uh, put that over there. So I'm not gonna patch it from scratch because uh, it took quite a while to make, so I'll just kind of explain it. So first of all, what happens is we get some note in that gets midi passed and all i'm doing is just unpacking the velocity of the midi note any midi note is just going to fire it off there's no specific note i was thinking it would be fun to somehow either assign midi notes to various parameters such as the noise or to make some sort of preset system where you could kind of lock parameters to a midi note but I remember trying to do that some years ago with something else and running into some problems. But anyway, the velocity gets divided by 127, so it's effectively being scaled from 0 to 1. That then goes into a line object, which allows us to um, smoothly move from values. And then, then that goes into this. Oh yes, this is my first jit.gl.pix patch. Yay. I've always been a little bit too intimidated, but um, there it is. <laughs> That's my first jit.gl.pix patch, which simply 
uh, multiplying the incoming number, which I've just called gain. Um, and I also do the same thing again here for the amount using a um, greater than or less than, whichever one that is. So that that's doing the filtering. That basically says that only let through numbers above a certain value. So let's move on to this part. So up here, we've got the jit.world, which we simply can turn on and off. Then there's uh, here where you can set your dimensions if you want. The bangs come out and the bangs go into this texture, which I don't think I need. I think maybe you do actually, but um, the, the, the noise comes from the jit.gl.bfg, um, which is a great object that they've added. Jit.bfg I used to play around with quite a lot, but because it was jitter, it was running on the CPU, it was quite demanding. So this is a very exciting thing that they've added to uh, Max 8 because you can do it all on your GPU now. Great for experimenting, uh, which then goes into that jit.gl.pix, which filters it using this amount dial. Whoops. Um, and then there's just a couple of like things here to set the scale of the BFG and the clock. That's a, that I just nicked from the help file. Uh, oh, there's another jit.gl picks here. What's that? Oh, that's the that's the gain. So that basically uses the MIDI note to kind of effectively turn the noise up and down before it goes into the feedback network. And this is the feedback network of sorts. So what happens is that it comes into this jit.gl.slab running a Luma key uh, shader, um, which basically keys out the luminance, I guess, I'm not 100% switched on with how this stuff works. It just works when I experimented with it once and I've sort of stuck with it. Um, and then it comes out of that, runs into a rotor, which does the zooming and the offsetting, and then into a sharpen slab. And then that gets fed back into the Luma key. So we're kind of keying out uh, the image onto itself, but after it's been tweaked, which is how you kind of get that sort of bleedless feedback. At least that's how I understand it. And then there's another jit.gl.pix here, which um, does the feedback filtering. So before everything goes back, fed back into itself, um, there's a little bit of filtering of some of the noise. And then that all just goes out into a jit.gl.video plane, which goes to the jit.world. So if you're not <coughs> thinking of... Uh, supporting me on Patreon to download this. Take a screenshot now. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, and then there's live.banks here, which is really great. Allows you a very nice, easy way to assign parameters to banks on the push. After you've named them all, uh, you have to make sure that you name all your parameters and stuff. Then they appear here and you can do... This is a nice interface for designing MIDI controller stuff. So yeah, that's it. Uh, do I want to save it? No, just want to look at it. Yeah, so I'm just sort of like, um, you know, controlling it from the push now. Just kind of like. And you, you could record all of this as automation and as MIDI. You could route MIDI from your drum rack into this to fire off. Um, sometimes it doesn't do anything. <laughs> you need to find the sweet spots with this type of stuff. I think it's because I've got the filtering a little bit too aggressive. Oh, there we go. Oh, the time was too high. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Just kind of like jam with it, have a nice relaxing time staring into the abyss of pixels. Try different noise types. Let's go to the right bank. What's the bank? Yeah, the bank is. So yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can automate all of this stuff with clip automation or in the timeline as well. And you can make like loads of MIDI clips that are just storing various settings. And then at any point you could just fire that clip off and you've got like something that's kind of working with your set. And but there's enough random in there to kind of make it unpredictable.
but enough in there to make it predictable in the sense that you have a rough idea what it's going to do. But interesting enough that you're kind of like it, it's providing a unique experience. I kind of quite like, like it without color eyes on. I think I just like the sort of the boldness, the kind of graphic uh, black and white uh, monochrome <laughs> type of thing. At any point, you can kind of like just hold a note. You've got to watch out for some of these stroby things, though, because they can screw with your, your screen. Yeah, so there you go. That's a little visualizer I made, which is now available on my Patreon link in the description. And we'll have more on more stuff like this in future videos. This was just a little walkthrough rather than a tutorial. So there you go. Have a nice day. Woo.